Hey folks, Bex here again. In my last video, I shared the benefits of rewinding your handspun singles. If you missed that video, I'll link it in the description and the pinned comment so that you can understand why you might want to do this. But I also briefly showed how to use your spinning wheel as a rewinding device. And I had some questions from viewers about that technique and how to set it up on their wheels. Now, Tragically, and this is very much a first world problem, I don't have access to every single spinning wheel out there, so it's impossible for me to give you a definitive list of wheels that it will or won't work on. Fortunately though, you can narrow it down based on the drive system that your wheel uses, so I'll show you as many as I can and I'll describe what to look for on other wheels as well. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this. Which wheel do you have? Does it work for rewinding or not? And that would be really helpful for other viewers to know as well. The basic idea is that if you can get the drive band to drive the bobbin without causing any damage to the wheel, then you have a wheel that you can use for rewinding. Let me show you what I mean. This is a Louette S10C in the Irish Tension configuration. In Irish tension, which is also known as bobbin lead or bobbin lead, the drive band here drives the bobbin directly. If I don't have any yarn going through the flyer, when I treadle, the bobbin rotates, but the flyer stays still. Irish tension bobbins have grooves. In this case, three grooves to give you three different ratios. The smaller the groove, the faster the bobbin rotates. For the purpose of rewinding, you can use any speed you like, and I normally go for the fastest option unless I'm working with a particularly delicate yarn where I might want to be a little bit more careful and perhaps go for a slower option. This time I'm going to use the biggest whirl, so the slowest speed, just because it's a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. We don't need the flyer hooks for rewinding and because they might get in the way, I'm just going to rotate them so that they're on the bottom of the flyer. I've got a bobbin of singles set up on my lazy case on the other side of the room to allow some space for the twist to redistribute. So I just wrap one end of the singles around the bobbin, start treadling, and then just start feeding the singles on from the side rather than through the flyer. I don't bother to tie a knot because after a couple of rotations, it will have a nice secure grip on the bobbin, but do whatever works for you. Then I just slowly move the yarn up and down the bobbin to gradually fill it up. I know a lot of viewers have shacked wheels, so just to look at those specifically for a second, shacked says that the matchless, flat iron and ladybug, we'll talk about the psychic later, can all be set up in Irish tension. So instead of having the drive band over the whirl like you would for scotch tension or flyer lead tension, you just put it over the groove in the end of the bobbin instead. Normally for bobbin lead, you'd need to have the brake going over the flyer whirl. We actually don't need the brake for this, but I'm gonna put it loosely over the flyer whirl just to keep it out of the way. I'm gonna attach the yarn to my leader and again, I'm ready to rewind. Shack bobbins have a small groove on one end of the bobbin for double drive and a large groove on the other end for scotch tension. So just like the Louette bobbins, the smaller the groove, the faster the bobbin will turn. You might find that you need to adjust your drive band tension if you're using the smaller groove, particularly if you've got the high speed bobbins. Those have the same size large groove as the standard ones, but with a smaller groove on the other end. I tend not to use the smaller end of the high speed bobbins for rewinding because the drive band just slips a little bit more than I would like, but see what happens with yours. So if your wheel is built to be capable of Irish tension or bobbin lead, then you're good to go. If your wheel is capable of using double drive, you can probably use it as a bobbin rewinder as well. Instead of having one loop going over the bobbin and one going over the whirl on the flyer, just run both loops over the groove in the bobbin. For example, my herring wheel here was built to run in scotch tension or double drive. It's set up for double drive at the moment, so if I treadle, both the bobbin and the flyer are turning. To use it as a rewinding device, I can just take the loop off the flyer, add it to the one on the bobbin, and now I'm just driving the bobbin. 
You may need to adjust the drive band tension so that it's not too loose. This is going to work differently on every wheel, but there should be a way of changing how far away the flyer is from the drive wheel. On the herring, the whole mother of all tilts. On this wheel, the bobbin and the flyer shaft are a pretty tight fit, so I often find that the flyer wants to turn as well, it sort of gets dragged along, but I can just hold it back with the hand that's feeding the yarn on. On the shack wheels, I've got the matchless set up in double drive at the moment, and I'm just going to move the loop that's on the flyer whirl onto the groove in the bobbin. Again, you may need to adjust your drive band tension to make it not slip. So if your wheel runs in double drive, you should be okay to use it for rewinding. There might be some exceptions. Try it out on your wheel and see. Before we get into scotch tension, if you're finding this video helpful, please do click the like button, subscribe for more and share the link with anyone who might find it useful. And if you'd like to support the channel financially, the links are in the description and the pinned comment below this video. It's taken about 12 hours of work so far to make this video. I'm only halfway through filming and I haven't started editing yet, so your support is massively appreciated. Scotch tension or flyer lead is where things get a little bit more nuanced. It really depends so much on the design of the wheel as to whether you can use this for rewinding or not. You might still be able to rewind onto it if you can get the drive band to drive the bobbin without it deviating too much from the normal path that the drive band would take and without putting additional strain on the wheel. Damage caused by using your wheel in a way that wasn't intended by the manufacturer is going to invalidate your warranty, so please be sensible. I am not taking any responsibility for any damage that you might cause. If you discover that you can't use your wheel as a bobbin winder, all is not lost. There are plenty of other rewinding options, as I mentioned in my previous video. For example, the Shack Sidekick is only officially able to use Scotch Tension, but I can put the brake band out of the way by looping it over the rear maiden quick release before I put the flyer back on, and to make the drive band go over the bobbin instead, I only have to move it a very small amount from here to here. I'm not having to stretch the drive band any more than I would with some of the larger whirls. The whole flyer and bobbin are well supported by the maidens at both ends, so I don't feel like I'm putting any extra strain on it by using it this way for a few minutes while I rewind. You might just need to increase the brake band tension enough to just lift the spring off the top of the drive wheel, but I can easily use this setup for a bit of rewinding. And it was at this point that I realised you could probably set the sidekick up in bobbin lead tension, even though it's not advertised as having that capability. This is definitely a subject for a whole other video, but it does work. You just have to choose your bobbin groove and flyer whirl combination very carefully. Otherwise, the brake band and the drive band rub against each other on the left hand side of the wheel at this crossover point, and you'll end up just wrecking your brake band very quickly. But as long as there's space between them, at that crossover point, it works absolutely fine. Interesting. My 1970s Ashford Traditional is a single speed version that was only designed to use Scotch tension, so the drive wheel lines up with the whirl, which in this case is on the front of the flyer. If I did try to make the drive band go over the bobbin, you can see how much I'd be changing the path of the drive band and it would just fall off when you start to treadle. On this wheel, the mother of all can be adjusted from front to back, but it's not enough to make the drive wheel and the bobbin line up. And even if it was, I'd have to do that every time I wanted to rewind and it's just not worth it. The design of the Ashford Traddy has changed a lot over the years, including some double drive versions. So just because it doesn't work on mine, it doesn't necessarily mean that it won't work on yours. I'm going to mention a few styles of wheel that I really wouldn't recommend doing this with. The first of these is the type of Scotch tension wheels where the flyer is only supported at the back especially if they use a poly drive band. Some examples of this would be things like the Kromsky Fantasia, the Woolmakers Bliss, Louette Victoria, and any of the major craft wheels. I think the drive band routing would be completely impractical on the major crafts anyway, but with that style of flyer where it's only supported at one point, 
you'd be adding a lot of extra force to a part of the wheel that wasn't designed to take it. So I don't recommend that. I also wouldn't recommend trying this with any e-spinners that aren't specifically built to support Irish tension. In most cases, the drive band won't fit over the end of the bobbin anyway, and you'd risk putting the motor under more strain than it was designed for. However, some e-spinners have bobbin winding attachments available that you can use with weaving bobbins. Hansen Crafts has the quill attachment, which you can bulk out with some masking tape to make that work. And Dreaming Robots have made design files available to 3D print a weaving bobbin winder for the Electric Eel 6. And there might be others that I'm not aware of as well. So when it comes to bobbin rewinding, bobbin lead or Irish tension wheels definitely work. Double drive wheels will probably work and Scotch tension wheels probably won't but I look forward to hearing which wheels you've been able to make it work on. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful and I will see you again soon with another video.